Welcome! In front of me is a Oppo Reno 14 FS and today I will show you how you can go through the setup process of this phone. Okay, so let's get started. When you put it up for the first time, you will be presented with this screen right over here. So let's click on the arrows. This is the only thing that we can do. And next we can find our desired language from the list. Now for me, it's selected English. So that's correct. I'm not going to be changing that. And next we can choose our region. Now, when it comes to region, I would recommend choosing any kind of European Union region as we do have much, much better uh, consumer rights than as far as I can tell almost any other country so uh, if, if you don't like to be spied on and uh, stuff like that I highly recommend that just by God do not select the UK they claim to be um, you know kind of uh, freedom of, of speech and all that crap but let's be honest they're not and anyway so I'll be selecting where I am from which will be Poland, there we go, perfect place. And next we have legal information. Now you can tap on each one of them uh, to see what they are, but I do want to point out we're technically not agreeing to them, we're just pressing next. So I don't know if that really has any kind of merit right here. But in any case, next we have set up using another device. So let me just grab my phone. And that gets this kind of pop-up on there. Set up new device. This will show up automatically on your screen on your old phone that is already set up the moment you enter this specific page. And as an example, I'm just going to showcase this again. If I go back, should... Oh, there we go, it disappeared. I actually didn't click on it. So I'll just kind of showcase this again. I'm not pressing anything. You can see it shows up automatically. So anyway, now uh, we can transfer over the data from your old device to this one. I believe this uses cloud data only. So it's not really actually like transferring over anything apart from signed in account, I think, of Google. Uh, but I could be wrong. I actually have never tested this out. Uh, but in any case, I will be setting it up as new. And there are also much better ways of transferring the data, more of it, which is usually the applications that come pre-installed with the device that we will be using. In case of Oppo, it's going to be, I think, Clone Phone, if I remember correctly. That application allows you to transfer over much more data, uh, data that is uh, just kind of like associated with the applications that you can also transfer over. So it uh, gives you much more granular control of what you're moving over from your old device to this one. Kind of like the traditional kind of, uh, yeah, we're going to move photos and uh, contacts and stuff like that. Here you can go with logs, messages, um, uh, the actual applications, the application data that is not available to you usually, and so on. Now, anyway, moving on, we have the connect to Wi-Fi. Obviously, you can sign into your Wi-Fi or ignore this by selecting skip. Uh, connect the internet. Oh, never mind. We can't ignore it. We need to have some kind of internet connection. Why? Would you be probably wondering. Because uh, Oppo tells you screw you. That, that's genuinely what it is. Uh, th there is no other reason for this. this. These devices can function without internet, so requiring you to set up using internet is uh, just an annoyance and has no actual reason other than to piss you off. Which it completely does. Thank you, Oppo. Go screw yourself. So I'm gonna sign into the network, not because that's how I want to set up my device, because that's how the device wants me to set it up. Awesome. There we go. You happy now? Can we progress further? Thanks. Great, okay. If it sounds like I'm agitated by this, it's because it, I am. It's called a setup. If I can't set up the device the way I want to, then how about you just bring it to me set up already? Ah. And we get to wait. Getting your phone ready. I didn't have the time to do that before. Copy apps and data. Okay, so we can move on uh, from that annoyance to another method of copying your apps and data. 
again, just a different method. Uh, I honestly don't bother even checking this. Uh, like I said before, the clone phone will be the superior option right here. So that's what you should use instead of these kind of crappy ways of moving over the data. Next, we have sign into uh, your Google account. Again, this step is optional. Please, you're gonna let me skip that one for now. Um, next, connect to mobile data. Uh, you can enter your SIM card right here if you want to, or you can skip this. Uh, typically, you would see this crap um, right next to the Wi-Fi because that's how I can get mobile or internet connection, either through SIM card or through Wi-Fi. But for some reason, no, 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 you just need to have Wi-Fi because uh, in reality, I think connecting eSIM requires a internet connection for some odd reason but nonetheless that shouldn't really be forced on you and if you skip it it should let you know that it's required for eSIM connection um, and as an example it should also give you the option to insert a physical SIM card instead of connecting to Wi-Fi because god effing forbid you're outside of your home and you don't have access to Wi-Fi and you actually want to start using this device right away well tough shit you can Next we have uh, unlocking method, so we have for basically screen locks and protections. We have password which consists of three different methods, uh, pattern, uh, password and, uh, and pin. So you can choose whichever one you want, I'm going to choose cancel. <laughs> and below that we have fingerprint and face unlock. Now for the two biometrics, which means fingerprint and face unlock, you will always be required to have pin, pattern or password. And the reason for that is, is because biometrics aren't 100% reliable. And in times where they just fail to unlock your device, you can always fall back onto the physical way of unlocking it that isn't uh, subject to random uh, fits of unrecognizing uh, your finger or your face. So, I'll be skipping this. Now, I am skipping this, but I don't actually recommend skipping protecting your device. Your phone will con basically contain all your private data, photos, contacts, documents, possibly very sensitive information. So if you were to ever lose your device, it would be very beneficial to you to have some kind of protection so whoever finds it doesn't have access to all your personal information. Next, we have Google services like location scanning and sending user and diagnostic data. Now, I'm not sure why it's this big and bold right here, like, it, like it's supposed to hold more weight behind it, that you can turn it off. Uh, but you can turn it off. Just know that this is from Google. And Google is, at this point, by definition and by the court, a monopoly that can stay a monopoly and also they do be in antitrust lawsuits which isn't because they are mm, trustworthy to say the least so these toggles actually mean absolutely nothing specifically things like location and sending user and diagnostic data you can turn those off but companies already found way more creative ways of basically tracking you everywhere and uh, without your permission, I should also add. So, I should also maybe say allegedly. Uh, so just know that when using Android, no matter what you turn off right here, you actually never have real privacy. You can always be tracked. Now, moving on, we have uh, choose your browser and search engine. So we're gonna click on next and you can select whatever you want from here. Uh, for my browser, I'll be choosing Brave. Actually, no, Firefox. I do like Firefox myself, actually. Uh, as when it comes down to plugins that allow you to block ads, Firefox still does that, unlike Chrome anymore. Uh, I don't recommend using Chrome. Anyway, moving on, we have uh, select a search engine. So, again, choose whichever one you want. Um, now, this is a very short list of search engines. There isn't many options right here. There is many more search engines to actually choose from uh, so I'm just gonna select the the one that I know that isn't that bad actually I think is no bad too so let's go with brave maybe 
Now, uh, moving on, we have review additional apps, uh, or basically, if you click on OK, uh, install garbage. So we're going to deselect all of them. Uh, I'm pretty sure majority of us don't give a two hoops about uh, uh, Royal Match, Coffee Dash 3D, and Solitaire, Cashback, and all that crap. So you probably want to deselect all of this. Recommended services. Uh, now these might seem like they're repeating, so auto update overnight, global search, uh, auto update system applications, uh, local screen magazine. Okay, now uh, I do want to point out this one, uh, like screen magazines. So uh, this is, as other devices call it, I believe, uh, wallpaper carousel. But basically what it is, is a curated wallpapers by Oppo that will be showing on your lock screen and they will be changing every time you uh, see that lock screen. So when, you, when your phone has a lock screen, you press the power button and you have a lock screen visible now, you choose you one wallpaper, then if you lock it and do the same thing again, it shows you a new wallpaper. And I do have to say, these wallpapers are usually uh, uninspiring. And uh, decent amount of them, at least on, some of the devices I don't remember if this one if this is this one actually it might be are just uh, not something that I would ever want to have as a wallpaper so I don't know why would for instance anyone want to have wallpaper of a brick wall or made cleaning and uh, obviously if you had some kind of like wallpapers of random people it might open you up to having to explain why you have a random mass lady uh, that cleans a place as your wallpaper to your significant others. Uh, I would probably like to avoid that one. So I'm gonna turn that off. Next we have a context aware, context aware network uh, service. Um, and just more, you can go over all of this to be honest, and turn off everything that you want and moving on. We have navigation method buttons and gestures. Choose whichever one you prefer. I like gestures which are selected by default. And moving on to the last page, we can click on Get Started, which will take us to the home screen with the device set up. And like I mentioned, uh, we're <clears throat> going to the setup under Tools. You will find the clone phone application right over here for transferring over data from your old device uh, in a much better way. Uh, though you will need to download this application on your old device as long as it's not an Oppo Realme uh, or OnePlus you can get it from your Play Store or App Store. If you have Oppo Realme or OnePlus, it's already on that device uh, pre-installed like it is here. So you can open that up. Anyway, with that being said, hope you found this very helpful. And if you did, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.